Allahümme salli ve sellim ala Nebina Muhammed aleyhisselam Salaten tedumu ve tühda ileyh Ve merrel eyali ve tuğlet devam Allahümme salli ve sellim ala Nebina Muhammed aleyhisselam Salaten tedumu ve tühda ileyh Ve merrel eyali ve tuğlet devam Allahümme salli ve sellim ala Nebina Muhammed aleyhisselam Salaten tedumu ve tühda ileyh Memerrel eyali ve tuğret devam Allahümme salli ve sellim ala Nebina Muhammed aleyhisselam Salat ette duhu ve dükkâ ileyh Memerrel eyali ve tuğret devam Allahümme salli ve sellim ala Salaten tedumu ve tüta iley Tulet devam Allahümme salli ve sellim ala Nebina Muhammed aleyhisselam Salaten tedumu ve tüta iley Salaten tedumu ve tüta iley Tulet devam Allahümme salli ve sellim ala Nebina Muhammed aleyhisselam Salaten tedumu ve tüta iley Allahümme salli ve sellim ala Nebina Muhammed aleyhisselam Salaten tedumu ve tülke ileyh Ve merhaz eyali ve tuğret devam Muhammeden Resulullah Ala Nebina aleyhissalatu vesselam Tarikatına es-sohka hayrun fi cemiyya. Medet ya Sultanul Enbiya, medet ya Sultanul Evliya, ya Allah. We ask for spiritual guidance of our Grand Shays, of the friends of God, that are responsible for us. Without a doubt, everybody's got somebody who is responsible for him, that's there for him. But just like in a hospital, in the emergency room, if you don't push the button, S, S, O, S. Push the button. So what's the meaning of SOS? Everybody says by pushing on the button and says Oh, the one who is responsible for me, oh my, oh my nurse, my caretaker, my heavenly caretaker. I'm asking you, I'm asking for you, I'm asking 
I'm calling to you and ask you for your assistance. I'm, I'm sick. And I want cure and healing. Just like in an emergency room. If the one responsible of that apartment, department once the, pu once the button has been pushed, they can see it on a screen and they receive the signal that is asking for them and then they act upon it. They, are there, they will there be there for you immediately and support you to give you the help you need. That's the way for all of us. And Allah says in the Holy Quran, do you think that you are without a Lord? Do you think you have no Lord, that you're free, just like dogs on the streets? No. You're always under, you're always being taken care of. Nobody, I've never sent anybody into this world without an assistant, without a companion, without someone to help you, to like a companion. Nobody is alone in this world and came alone. The soul of the child, the soul of the human, do you think it was left free from the world of the souls and just sent and pushed down here? Just now, come on now, get down, Abdekar. Do you really think like that? Every soul that's supposed to enter a body comes with an, a companion down onto this earth comes with a companion. It's never without a companion. But we humans are weak and ignorant, my brother Abdul Qadir. We have no idea from about nothing. And it may be that you've been a professor at the Oxford University, a professor working at Harvard University, but you're still ignorant because of no idea who you are, what you are, where you're from, and with whom you are, and where you're coming from and whom you're going to, and with whom you came. Suddenly, my, my eyes are open. I was there, Sheikh. And when your eyes were closed, where were you then? Where were you? So who accompanied you from down, from up there, from the divine presence, from the world of the souls? And then you came all by yourself? You were unconsciously, and you had no consciousness about it. The soul is unconscious and came like that into the body, to this world. And now our soul has to, has to gain more and more consciousness, has to become even more and more awake and awake and awake, so that the soul will remind, be reminded, oh, with whom what I, was I in pre-eternity? in the first existence is that is this is this word my first existence do you really think you're here on this earth and you found it, your existence here what kind of an existence is that my brother Mikkel is this your first existence or is it or is it your second existence, or your pre-existence, or post-existence? So what kind of an existence are you? Did you ever think about that? No. 
we have to get an idea to think about that. All by ourselves, we don't get to those questions. We need to. We need to be led to get that idea. Brother, you're always there for me. When I, I fail, you help. Nobody gets into this world alone, and nobody leaves this world alone. There's always a companion. So, so the angels accompanied you, true, to all the different stations of heavens. An angel was waiting for you the first month of the second month of the baby, the th third, fourth, sixth month of the child, seventh month of a child, that's my month, the eighth month, the ninth month. There are some that have a 10, and 11, and 12, and my brother was on the 12th month being born. For 12 months he was laying and relaxing in the ballet, and then he came out like that, so tall. Every month is one station of heavens. The first month, it's the ninth station of heaven. Second month, eight months of station of, of the heavenly station. So the third month of, in the baby in the womb is the, four, is the seventh um, heaven, and with each station, a different angel was getting along. And in the mon nine months. There is an angel accompanying you, and that angel is moving you from left to right and from right to left in the womb of the mother. And then the mother says, oh, look, father, it's moving. It's kicking. Oh, look, here. You can see the, the bump and the kick, and here now it's kicking there. And the people think like that. But that's, that's the work of an angel that's turning to the right, that the baby is not staying still, and then turning to the left again. That's what the angel is doing with the baby. So under safety and under, gu under guard, that angel, as long as he doesn't get the order from, from the Lord himself, will never say, get out now. But the bad, 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 bad uncle doctors, they say, you have to get out now. They decide. But it's the angels are waiting for the order of the Lord for it to come out. And they start to meddle. And they do a caesarean section, a C-section. They make too many cuts for the baby without the order of the Lord that it gets out like that. And they make you fear it, but but the angels are constantly working. But the baby itself, the soul of the baby, the soul of the baby's got a personal companion besides the angels, and that is the sheikh, the spiritual. For him, the one who's being made responsible, the spiritual master. To him we come, and and he takes you in the in the souls of the word, and by the, in the way when the soul is being saved, and is being given into the mother, and is giving to the womb of the uh, to the breast of the mother, the soul, in the world of the souls, the soul of the baby is being given into the responsible hands of the one who is responsible for you, and that is the sheikh that is responsible for that soul. So he knows you and me, 
even in pre-eternity, not here. And he's accompanying you until the, the um, womb of the mother, and then he waits for you to leave. And then he sees, and, and he's accompanying every step of the in our life. And he doesn't show itself. He doesn't meddle, it so it seems. And you experience your story at first. And then you fall down onto your nose and then get up again on your feet. And then up and down, up and down, and you fall and then you get up again. So that you mature and more and more and uh, get used to st things and understood. You need help, you need a company, a companion that, that you can even touch and can feel and can talk to and ask. And you ask and you, and you go to a doctor and to a different doctor and nobody can help you. They can give you pills for that, but what about... What about your psyche and your psychology, the, the side of the soul that nobody can help you with? There is nobody, there is no psychiatrist that can actually help you with that. They can talk stupid stuff and give you pills, but that's it. And then you're looking for someone, to a, looking for a friend of God. I'm looking for a spiritual master. You're actually looking for a friend of God. But you don't want to be meddled with God, so, so you're only looking for a spiritual master that, that doesn't have somehow no connection to God, but it's not true, because a true spiritual master has a connection to God, because he has to get, he has to receive his spiritual electric from a power station. And then the sheikh that is responsible for you, your spiritual master, Simon, that he is waiting for you to push the button. Because that's the permission. I give you permission to publicly, openly, to represent me and give me help and, and please guide me. I will follow you. That's that permission, SOS. Oh, it's more like SMS, like save my soul instead of SOS. SMS. And then he's going to show himself. Only then you have to ask for him. You have to push the button. I'm dying. I can't go any do any more. Come help me. I need you. Please come. I surrender myself. I will follow you. I by by my honor. And I giving bayat. I will follow you with that. I will I hold on to your hand. And that is the hand of God on earth. That's the rope of God, and so hold on tight, all you believers, hold on tight. <laughs> we understood what he meant. Hold on tight to the rope of God, and the true spiritual sheikh and master is the rope. Don't think like a, a rope, like in it. But it's connected where to? To the up above. If you follow them step by step, they will. And you think like you're going one kilometer straight ahead, you're actually going going up, straight up, with each step that you take, that you f let um, follow that guide. You going up, not on this or down here, but you're going up. The, the saints, Allah, they let us open these secrets and wisdoms. So you think you're walking on, on earth and follow them. They don't go up, but they're going up with you always. Because his path is not like our path in this world. If you follow a spiritual master, we don't walk on earth. We are walking 
and moving up to the Divine Presence. It's not easy. And you get, get f afraid of the heights and you get fear of heights. And do you have it too? Yes, sometimes. And he, in the beginning, he was our companion. And in the middle of our life, he is our companion after we push the button. And at the end of our life, he is also our companion. He is accompanying you from this life to that life, to the life of hereafter. Otherwise, we're going to be left in ignorant in our dark, t dark tunnel and we don't find the way out or the light. He has to help us out. He brought us into this life and, and he has to help us out again. Without our own free will and our contract, he got us into this life because we are unconscious. And now, depending on how much consciousness we attained, we give him permission, we have to give him permission, guide us out of the darkness. When Adam a.s., may peace be upon him, when he had been uninvited from paradise and was invited into this world, he entered a dark world because it was at night and it was pitch black. Never in his life until now, and that was a life in paradise, ever seen darkness. He had no, no idea what darkness is because there was always light in paradise. And never one part of darkness in there. He didn't know what darkness was. So he is falling into a dark world. It's pitch black with no moons, no sun, no stars. Pitch black. And he's getting afraid. And for the first time he had a feeling of fear. He didn't know what it was and he was starting to shiver. Oh Lord, where, where did you send me to? What kind of, of shivering is that? What's that feeling? That's fear, God says Adam to Adam. In this world, you will get that a lot. In paradise, there is no fear. Because that paradise is a safe, is a safe place, a place of peace. It's the place of happiness. It's a place of of joy and of friends and you don't have any enemies over there and therefore you don't need to be afraid of anything and that is why we ask at night and doing prayers at night and once the sun has come up again and we do have two more records, and that is all in the tradition of Adam al -Azim. He was afraid, and when he saw something getting, growing lighter in, in the sky, and then he saw that, and he felt such a joy, and he fell down and surrendered to think that a little bit, it got a little bit lighter, and, and that these are his prayers. And that is what a prophet did, we do it as well. If he hadn't done that, we wouldn't be allowed to do it. That is what religion is. We've got traditions of Adam a.s., of traditions by Abraham a.s., and the traditions of Muhammad a.s. And he was afraid because it was dark. And he said, I have fallen into a dark world. This world is dark. And there's like a, it was like, like a light bulb or a chain of 
and without the stars, without any light in the sky, it's frightful. And go outside when there's are no street lights, and go for go into the forest with no lights, and you get afraid, pitch black. And Allah's mercy sent us the sun, and He sent a sun, a moon, and stars that give light, that we shall find our way and are not afraid. And you are stunned. I, Allah, I am the merciful one, he said. I will never leave you alone. Whose father, true father would or mother would ever leave their child to go out onto the street, a baby even? Do you really think Allah will let us just fall into darkness like that? We are always having a, comp a companion. We always have someone who comes along. We only need to ask for, for, for us to meet them and to finally meet them. So, so now it comes, now it, here it is. If we have found the spiritual responsible once we found them, we say, Oh, oh, I, I arrived. And many say that once they once they found a spiritual center, they say, Ah, oh, I feel home. I feel I like I arrived. That, that's that's the statement. That's the feeling, the feeling of having arrived, to finally have arrived. That spiritual. It's a spiritual thing. The soul is making you say that I feel like I arrived, I came home. I, I found my companion, my, my person of safety. I found him again, but he was always with you. But you didn't know that. His, that's why he didn't show himself to you. But, but once you've asked for him, I finally want to meet him and get to know him. He will show him to you. That's the first station and the most risk, um, important step. But then, so where does he take you? Where does he accompany you? To to what to what point? Until you have found yourself, which means that the task actually is his task. Actually, is from you Allah from you Allah we came and to you Allah we go to acknowledge uh, get to know yourself and you will get to know me so find out who I am by finding out who you are yourself and that actually means is you from from me I come and to you I come back from me to you so there are two me's so you have to find yourself. That's actually what it meant. I have to get to come, my, come to my senses. It's not from, from my outer appearance into my true being. The Sheikh has got the task to get you from you to you. And once you've found yourself, you don't need to do that and if and you, you then you can say oh i've i've come to my senses don't you say that you only say that once you get the feeling to have a feeling of arrival and once that you got to your goal that you don't look for anything and i i come to my sense i found I've got complete consciousness. I don't need anything. I found, I came to my senses. That's what it means. From him to, from me to me. And that is the Sheikh that is getting you from you to you yourself. And that is in the Quran. 
that is the opening, one, one tefsir, one small explanation or interpretation. Come to me. Not even our brother understood that. So what is it? Ah. So what does that mean? Oh, you humans, come to me with a satisfied ego. Come, let it be satisfied, spiritually satisfied. Come with a nest ego to come back that has been satisfied, which means the ego that that has come to its senses and that it's that it purified and it's cleansed because the ego is part of the soul which means that the ego your lower side of the ego has been purified and has found to its light self soul and the nefs Nefsu Haiwan, Nefsu Sultan, the animal ego gets to to the blessed ego, and to, together they make up the the soul. That is the ego, Nefs. It means that the animal ego cleanses from of its animal traits and finds its true finds back to its true identity and that is what it means and that is the satisfied ego come back to me with that that's enough for today for those who understand that's a very high station high level of understanding and we get until here for those who understood we don't have to say any more that's a very interesting sohbet speech we had today Allah 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 Thank you.